Welcome to Thoughts on the Market. I'm Mike Cypress, Morgan Stanley's Head of U.S. Brokers, Asset Managers, and Exchanges Team. And I'm Bruce Hamilton, Head of European Asset Management and Diversified Financials Research. And on this special episode of the podcast, we'll talk about what the generative AI revolution might mean for asset and wealth managers. It's Tuesday, October 17th at 10 a.m. in New York. And 3 p.m. in London. My colleagues and I believe that generative AI is a revolution rather than simply an evolution, and one that is well underway. We think Gen AI, which differs from traditional AI, and that it uses data to create new content, will fundamentally transform how we live and work. This is certainly the case for asset and wealth management, where leading firms have already started deploying and extracting tangible benefits from Gen AI across an array of use cases. Bruce, what has been the initial focus among firms that have successfully deployed Gen AI so far? And something that has been top of mind for most of us, is Gen AI replacing human resources? So Mike, clearly it's early days, but from our conversations with more than 20 firms managing over 20 trillion in assets, it seems clear that the immediate opportunities are mainly around efficiency gains rather than top line improvements. Though over time as these evolve, we expect that this can drive opportunity for top line also. All firms we spoke with see the importance of humans in the loop given risks. So AI as co-pilot and freeing up resource for more value added activities rather than replacing humans. What are some of the topmost priorities for firms already implementing Gen AI? And in broad terms, how are they thinking about integrating Gen AI within their business models? So opportunities are seen across the value chain in sales and client service, product development, investment and research, and middle and back office. Initial efficiency use cases would include drafting customized pitch or RFP reports in sales, synthesis of research and extraction of data and research, and coding in IT. Now, Mike, specifically within the asset management space, there are two primary ways Gen AI is disrupting. One is through efficiencies and two revenue opportunities. Can you speak to the latter? How would Gen AI change or improve asset management? And do you believe it will truly transform the industry? Absolutely. I think it can transform the industry because what's going to change how we live, how we work, and that will have implications across business models and the competitive landscape. I believe we're now at an AI tipping point just in terms of its ability to be deployed on a widespread basis across asset managers. The initial focus is overwhelmingly on driving efficiency gains. And at the moment, there's skepticism if Gen AI can drive product alpha, but it should help with some of the maintenance tasks around collecting and summarizing information and cleaning data. This should help release PMs of time to focus more on higher value idea generation and testing their ideas, which should help performance generation. I don't think it hurts. All in, we think this could result in up to 30% productivity gains across the investment functions. We've talked about how Gen AI affects asset management. Do you think it can transform how financial advisors do their job? And what kind of productivity gains are you expecting to see? Financial advisors stand to benefit the most from Gen AI because it should help liberate advisors' time spent on routine or administrative tasks and allow them to focus more of their time on building deeper connections with clients and allowing them to service more clients with the same resources. And so that's how you get the revenue opportunity by serving more clients and more assets. It's more of a co-pilot or tool that enhances human capabilities as opposed to replacing the human advisor. So on the wealth side, we do see more of a revenue opportunity for Gen AI than we do on the asset management side in the near to medium term. Use cases include collecting client information in interactive ways and summarizing those insights, as well as proposing the next best actions and drafting engagement plans and talking points. All in, Gen AI should help drive productivity improvements between 30 to 40 percent in the wealth sleeve. So Mike, what's your outlook for the next three to five years when it comes to the impact of Gen AI on asset management? It's really an expense efficiency play in the near to medium term for asset managers. But as you look out over the next three to five years, we could see a situation where AI is embedded in a broader range of activities from product development to portfolio management and trading areas, including trade optimization strategies, as well as brainstorming new product ideas tailored to client needs. Now, in terms of assessing firms that are best placed, our qualitative assessment considers four main areas. First, there's firm scale and resources to allocate, so both profitability and balance sheet capacity. Secondly, we consider a firm's in-house data and technology resources to drive change. Thirdly, a firm's access to proprietary data sets where it can leverage AI capabilities. And finally, there's the strategic priority assigned to AI by management. 
But Mike, what are some of the risks and limitations of AI technology when it comes to wealth management and specifically to financial advisors rather than to back office functions? We see the risks falling into two categories. There's technological risks on one side that includes hallucinations that can result in poor decisions, as well as inability to trace underlying logic and the threat of cyber attack and fraud. Then on the other side, there's usage risks, which include data privacy, improperly trained models, as well as copyright concerns. We're seeing firms respond to these challenges by maintaining a human in the loop approach to AI adoption. That is, a human is involved in the decision making process such that AI operates with human oversight and intervention. Bruce, thanks so much for taking the time to talk. Great speaking with you, Mike. And thanks for listening. If you enjoy Thoughts on the Market, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and share the podcast with a friend or colleague today. The preceding content is informational only and based on information available when created. It is not an offer or solicitation, nor is it tax or legal advice. It does not consider your financial circumstances and objectives and may not be suitable for you.